The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Thomas called the twin, who was one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to him, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then Jesus said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to Thomas, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. The Gospel of the Lord. All this week we have been pondering the great virtue of faith, beginning with last Sunday when we had the faith of Jairus and the woman with the hemorrhage, who because of their need of healing took action based on their faith and came to Jesus and asked for healing, and they were healed. We had then during the week the great solemnity of the apostles Peter and Paul, and they also were on a journey of faith. Ultimately, they both were martyred, but they made mistakes along the way, and yet Jesus was with them, and they grew in their faith. We then had the story of the paralytic and the faith of his friends who brought the paralytic to Jesus and even managed to break through the roof of the house where he was teaching, lowering their friend down, and Jesus marveled at the action of these friends of faith, and this man was healed. And then all this week we've been pondering the faith of Abraham in the first reading, the great father of faith who left everything, his father's house and his inheritance, and then began to detach himself, enter into sacrificial life, sacrificing animals, his own, and then part of his own flesh in the covenant of circumcision, then even giving his only beloved son, Isaac, the great act of faith. Today we continue with St. Thomas. St. Thomas teaches us something very profound, and that is that faith flourishes when we are in community with fellow believers, and we're worshiping together on a regular basis and praying with each other and ministering to each other in our needs. And that's very important because we are the body of Christ. We have many different gifts and charisms. We also have many different needs. Sometimes we are very much in need. Maybe we are doubting or maybe we're sick or we have petitions that need prayers. And so we bring them into the community and the strength of other believers step in for our weakness. Other times we may be very strong and our faith helps to supplement others who are struggling. So together as a community we're called to grow. That's what Thomas did not quite grasp when he absented himself from the community of the Twelve, was not with them when Jesus first appeared in the upper room. Now maybe because he was doubting, but also grieving. And in the grief, sometimes people tend to isolate themselves. And it was only when he returned to his community a week later that Jesus appeared again, and that's the story we have in today's Gospel. Notice what Jesus does. He once again appears and then invites Thomas to touch his wounds. And when Thomas does so, he grows in his faith by leaps and bounds and doesn't go just from doubt to faith, but to one of the greatest statements of faith anywhere in the Gospels, calling Jesus God for the very first time in the Gospel of John. We're called to transcend even that, however, because Thomas had the advantage of being with Jesus and actually touching his wounds. Notice what Jesus says to Thomas, Have you believed because you have seen me? 
Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. And that's us. There's a beatitude being conferred there. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. That's why it's so important for us to gather together continually. I know we've been shut down and social distancing and all of that, but it just heightens our awareness of the importance of each other and gathering as a community. The other point to notice in today's readings is that Jesus did not hesitate to show Thomas his wounds and again invited him to touch them. The wounds of Christ have played such an important role role in the growth of Christian faith down through the centuries. From the fact that certain saints were blessed to receive the wounds of Christ in what's known as the stigmata, to others being outright martyrs, like St. Thomas. But we have a whole range of martyrs down through the centuries. We're called to enter into that dynamic and to be witnesses, which is another word for martyr, to our faith now. Sometimes we maybe tend to pull back a little bit and say, well, I've got my own wounds. I'm not ready to step out and witness to what I believe because I'm so caught up in dysfunction or even sin. But that's when we're really called to rely on Christ and the power of the Spirit because when we witness, even in our weaknesses, that's when we become genuine. Other people know our weaknesses, they're pretty evident, but they marvel at the fact that even with our weaknesses, we're still willing to step out and to help each other, and not to hide behind our wounds, but allow Christ to work through them. That's where this gospel is so important for our own journey today. Just one last point in the first reading, St. Paul emphasizes the community aspect of faith. He says, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Jesus Christ himself as the cornerstone. There's the essence of why we gather together. We're being built up as the spiritual house of God. And by doing that, we're now inviting others to come in and fellowship with us. And we share with each other and with those who are new the faith that we do have and the Holy Spirit always works. So with that, let us thank God for our saints, especially St. Thomas, and let us pray.